Welcome to the spectacular Red Bull Ring, where the FIM Sidecar World Championship has been greeted by, well, challenging conditions to say the least. We've had a decent run of the weather so far this season in the first FIM Sidecar World Championship campaign run by the IDM organization. However, here at the Red Bull Ring, conditions certainly suboptimal. It was quite wet in qualifying one on Friday. On the Saturday, however, qualifying two this morning, it was torrential, effectively a washout. There were riders going around the circuit, but uh, to illustrate the pace difference from Friday to Saturday, uh, it was a 1.56, the best time we saw in the qualifying one session, and a two minute, two second time was the best we saw out of quali two. Uh, the conditions still very much closer to torrential uh, than ideal, of course. Uh, you can see on screen there are still a lot of damp patches around the circuit. The race has been delayed by approximately an hour because of these conditions, but we are now at a point where the circuit seems to be raceable. Uh, I think, if anything, it's going to become if the weather holds off, and I know we've had intermittent showers all day long across most of Europe, actually. Um, it, it's going to be a matter of whether or not it stays dry. If it does stay dry, it, it might get a bit too uh, a bit too dry almost for the wet weather tyres. No one's going to be on slicks, I can assure you of that, but they might start to churn those rear wet tyres uh, towards the end of this race. It's the first race of two this weekend for the FIM Sidecar World Championship. It's our shorter 10-lap sprint race so very much a matter of pure pace above everything uh, around the circuit today. Of course, this circuit, the Red Bull Ring, the former Oschitz Ring, the former A1 Ring, uh, it is very much a right-hand predominant circuit. So the, the passengers are going to be doing a lot of leaning to the right-hand side around this circuit. Uh, of course, we are running the motorcycle configuration. We are on an IDM uh, Superbike weekend, of course and uh, we will therefore be running the chicane uh, between the standard turns two and three around this Austrian facility. That chicane newly installed in the last couple of years to increase safety for two-wheeled competition. So then, the story of the championship to this point, of course, has been very much Ellis and Clement, the deciding champion, uh, the defending champions, I should say, uh, fighting up against the Birchall brothers. There is the number six group of Ellis and Clement, who have been so impressive. Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement, reigning champions, and our pole sitters, critically, for today as well. They are second in the championship at the moment, up against uh, Ben and Tom Birchall, who have been really spectacular so far this season in the World Championship and beyond uh, with a new sidecar lap record and two more victories to their name, of course, at the Isle of Man TT earlier in the season as well. Also demonstrated their machine at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. So they've been very much holding the flag aloft for sidecar racing over the last few months. You saw there the number 45 of Payne and Rousseau. Uh, that is a good starting position for Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau, as it is. Uh, for Pavarinta and De Haas, Pekka Pavarinta and Ilse De Haas. Uh, of course, Pavarinta, a five-time world champion. And uh, we'll be looking to try and get a good result out of this one. Arguably, their best showing came at Most last time out. There is the number 21 machine, a little further up the grid, I think, than we've seen uh, the combination of Stroer and Kolsch up the order so far. One of many Bonovo action-backed machines. Uh, Benny Stroer and Kevin Kolsch uh, lining up fourth on the grid. Quite the opportunity, uh, I would say. Stroer, a former world champion, of course. The team that sits third in the world championship, the Christies, Sam and Tom Christie. Uh, obviously a generational family, multi-generational family in sidecar competition. They have been consistent. They're not to ha they have not yet taken uh, to the top step of the podium, but they have been consistent so far this season, and that has awarded them with third in the championship, albeit they are 37 points back from our pole sitters, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. 
and they are we just see that the car that or the, the sidecar that lines up alongside them Kershaw and Charlwood the number 29 machine the Quattro plant backed number 22 uh, 29 of Stephen Kershaw and Ryan Charlwood they have had solid runs so far this season they have been on the pace at times they've also had a little bit of misfortune starting the season off with a dnf on lap one of the year but since then they've bounced back admirably and uh, albeit they were not too far up the standings at any point last time out at most there is the surprise package of the qualifying results. The Birchells all the way down in seventh position. This is the most adversity they've faced so far this season. I alluded to it at Most. It really was a matter now for Ellis and Clement, the chasing pack, of just hoping that the Birchells start to have something not go their way. Because so far it's been all but a fairy tale season uh, for the Mansfield based brothers, who have taken four wins from six races so far this season and the two that weren't victories were second places they're going to do well to uh, get anywhere near p2 or indeed p1 today there is the reeves wilts combo the number 77 piloted by tim reeves eighth on the grid it is certainly quite a mixed up order a few machines not quite where you'd expect them to be uh, the peugeots are next in ninth position the 74 racing team I believe they were also the last to get under the two minute barrier there one minute 59.955 uh, that time from q1 uh, q2 was effectively a washout for all parties of course uh, archer and christie uh, on the number 70 good to see the hannafin racing number 70 back it wasn't with us in most uh, the combination of the third christie adam christie uh, along with rupert archer the highly experienced Rupert Archer, uh, the younger Christie, Adam Christie, uh, certainly not quite as well seasoned, uh, but they'll be looking for a good result as well for Hannafin Racing. Can they get two into the top 10? Uh, they have done that already a couple of times this year, at least once this year at Spa, uh, when we were supporting the Spa 24 hour moto event. And the seventh, uh, the 11th place machine is rather poetically the 11. Uh, Kim's Vega and Sedlacek there. They had a couple of offs at Most. They'll be looking to stay on terra firma in these very difficult conditions at the Red Bull Ring. It's one of the most challenging races we've seen in the FIM World sidecars so far this year. You won't want to miss it. Fahrspaß pur und ab sofort. Vier Jahre Garantie auf alle neuen Kawasaki Straßenmotorräder in Deutschland. Auf zum Kawasaki Vertragspark. Dort findet ihr das richtige Motorrad. Garantiert. So then, as you can see, riders already underway. Ellis and Clement on pole position for this race alongside the combination of Payne and Russo. Pekka Pavarinta and Ilse de Haas are next on the grid on row two alongside Benny Stroyer and Kevin Kölsch. Row three of the grid is the Christie combination on the Hannafin machine. Sam and Tom Christie, Kershaw and Charlwood alongside them on row three. The Birchels alongside Tim Reeves and Wilkes on row four. 
The fifth row of the grid is the Peugeot family unit, Ted and Vincent Peugeot, uh, the French uh, pair alongside Archer and Christie. Kimswenger and Sedlacek next alongside the number 10 machine. Uh, we then move on to the Schwegler and Kapeski machine, the triple one of Cable and Richardson, Vinay and Pirat in the number nine. And rather surprisingly, all the way down towards the back there, Zimmerman and Mal on the 33. Gertlich and Neubert are next in the 42. And then a new outfit, the number 25, uh, Duras there uh, as the passenger. We've seen Duras out a few times, uh, but it is a new a, a new driver for that machine. Uh, Leugen uh, in that all-French lineup. I believe Darris has been racing elsewhere. I think it was the number nine he may have been on previously. Uh, he has been hopping since then. It is Ellis and Clement, though, on pole position. Ted, Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement, who will start from the very front of the order. The reigning champions who have been sensational this year. We had a wonderful battle in race two at Most. I recommend you go back and watch the last lap if you're going to watch anything from Most, the final lap of race two uh, in the FIM Sidecar World Championship race on Sunday was amazing. Uh, absolute duel between the Ellis's, or Ellis and Clement uh, and the Birchall brothers. The Birchall certainly with a lot more work to do today from seventh on the grid. But what about Harry Payne? What can he do along with Kevin Rousseau from the inside of the front row, as it were? If they do get a good start, they will, of course, have the inside line into the first corner. First corner, a significant braking zone, particularly in the wet conditions. So a good launch is going to be critical towards the first corner. They're underway and we are racing. It is a good start from both parties on the front row, but Payne and Rousseau surge ahead. It's a very, very good start there by Harry Payne. Payne to the front then. Ellis and Clamar hold on to second and place. Just looking out for the Birchalls. Where have they ended up? They're in fifth position by the looks of it. They're just ahead of Tim Reeves there. Onto the brakes for the second time in the lap around this chicane. That is, of course, a motorcycle event exclusive. Does rather slow up the entry to this corner, traditionally known as Turn 3. So it's Turn 4 around this version of the Red Bull Ring layout, but... Uh, not quite as deep of a braking zone, but in these conditions, I think in the early stages, it's all about just getting through the laps anyway. Everyone spreading out a little bit there, trying to see their way through the spray. Looking to try and have a clear sight of the next corner ahead of them. Certainly is still very wet out there. In second place then, the pole sitters the reigning champs, Ellis and Clement, they will want to try and outscore the Birchalls by as much as possible. It's the best opportunity that Ellis and Clement have had so far this season to outscore the Birchalls. The Birchalls who run in sixth place now, they're behind uh, the Christies by the looks of it. Looks like Sam and Tom Christie have managed to get by there. I'd say while we're certainly not going to determine a championship here this weekend, at the Red Bull Ring, mathematically speaking, it's already all but a two-horse race at the top end of the points. It will take a lot of misfortune for the top two to not be the championship contenders come the end of the year. And uh, Ellis and Clement really need two solid results, preferably two outscores over the Birchalls uh, to have a good shot uh, going into the second half of the season. And wow, look at Reeves all the way up into third place. Okay. So Tim Reeves has really surged through the order on that first lap. I thought he was a little bit further back uh, than I thought. But Reeves briefly up to third place. Pavarinta and Dehas go back through. Now around the outside go Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes. Very, very brave piloting and passengering there. Up into third then. Tim Reeves, of course, the, I believe, the most experienced 
Certainly one of the most well-decorated riders on there. Eight-time world champion. It doesn't get any more decorated than that. Surging out of the corner wonderfully there. I think a move may have been on for second place. Here's how he got through to third, though. Right around the outside. Tail sliding all the while. As we go back to live pictures, though, I suspect the number 77 may be up to P2. Getting past the Christies, meanwhile, are the Birchalls. Brotherly warfare. And up to second place indeed has gone Tim Reeves there. So Reeves is up to second place. Reeves and Mark Wilkes demoting Ellis and Clement further. A good two seconds or so of an advantage for Payne and Rousseau at the sharp end of the order. What will Reeves and Wilkes be able to do in comparison? But this is really not going the way of Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement in the early stages. Just don't seem to have the confidence and the grip compared to some of those around. Pekka Pavarinta now the next on the back of the Yamaha-powered machine. A majority of these are Yamaha-powered machines, with the exception being the Birchalls and a Suzuki further back. But side by side for third position, it looks as though Pavarinta and De Haas have that position. Ilsa De Haas through into third place past Emmanuel Clement and Todd Ellis with Pekka Pavarinta at the controls. Ben and Tom Birchall, meanwhile, are now right behind their championship rivals when they saw the grid. So they were seventh and Ellis and Clement were on pole. I'm sure that the Birchalls thought they were going to end up more than likely losing some points today. However, they now find themselves on the rear wheels of Ellis and Clement of the 2022 champions and again surging out of the corner and downhill it looks as though Ben and Tom Birchall have got it done they have the inside line and again Ellis and Clement it just seems they're struggling for traction although took a nice line there didn't quite manage to surge by but that is critical for not just the championship, or not just this weekend, but the championship as a whole. The fact that the Birchalls have managed to get past Ellis and Clement. And now the fact that the two championship contenders are off the podium, that's also extremely interesting. You see there, Ellis and Clement tried to get to the inside of the Birchalls. The Birchalls a little bit later on the breaks, I think also uh, slightly offline there. I think it was slightly wetter. Uh, on the inside of the corner there. But nonetheless, they managed to surge on by at the Schlossgold corner. It is Payne and Rousseau that lead the way. Let's see what the interval is this time by. Timing screen just updating as they start lap four of the race. It's two seconds. Payne and Rousseau with three purple sectors on that last lap. That said, Pavarinta and De Haas were even faster still through the final sector. It seems as though everybody, as they get up to speed, as the confidence grows in these conditions, everybody is finding a bit more time. And I think that could apply to Ellis and Clement as well, because they have not let go of the Birchalls. They're much closer to the Birchalls than I would have anticipated. It's the Steinhausen Racing 45, though, that leads the way. Harry Payne, Kevin Rousseau. You see there Rousseau glancing over the shoulder as he ducked down out of the Remus curve. And what he sees over the shoulder is a fair advantage for he and Harry Payne to try and hold. As Oh, goodness me. Is that the opportunity that... Uh, the six crew need. I thought Todd Ellis had outbroke himself a little bit there. He certainly surged up towards the Birchalls at the apex. And it does look as though the pendulum is now swinging back in favour of Ellis and Clement. Certainly they're looking quicker than the Birchalls through this middle sector of the circuit. They head out through the Verth Bend. And towards Rint. Named, of course, after 
the late great Jochenrint on the four-wheeled side of the of the dime. There's the 29. The Quattro plant machine running well. Peugeot's also doing a good job up job up in eighth place as well. They've made up a position or two. Story and Culture have, have of course fallen down the order. They were fourth on the grid. They've dropped down to P10 or P9 I should say. So not quite the start that they would have wanted from their second row opportunity. But still keeping Ted and Vincent Peugeot honest there certainly in the battle for eighth place. Peugeot's, I believe, are entered into the German Championship primarily, the IDM Championship. So they'll be scoring points in that series. Currently the leading IDM points registered team in eighth place. The gap remained at just over two seconds. It was a few hundreds in it uh, between the top two last time out. Slightly in favour of Reeves and Wilkes, but Literally half a tenth the gain for Tim Reeves. It's much closer proximity for fourth and fifth position, though. As once again, Ellison Clement just within touching distance almost of the Birchalls. Not quite as noticeably quick uh, that time through the Schlossgold corner where they lost out to the Birchalls a couple of laps ago. Looks like Pavarinter and De Haas as well aren't really gaining on Reeves and Wilkes, which I suspected they might do uh, at one point. Wonderful sound generated by these 600cc machines. Of course, the 1000cc era ended in the 2010s. We've been running... 600 for the last several years. The performance of them no less impressive. LCR and ARS chassis broadly across the field. And certainly Yamaha engines favoured overall as well. That said, oh goodness me, I think just running wide there may have gone Ellis and Clement. I think the Birchalls slightly outbreak themselves. They had a big wiggle on into the corner. They just about got it stopped for the apex. Ellis and Clement decided to maybe go five metres deeper into the corner. And uh, I think they went off onto the slippery paint. And of course, that is a factor as well, particularly at turn one, the Nicky Lauda curve. There is a lot of paint there on the outside of the turn. The same applies here as well at Remus. There are a couple of parts you really don't want to get the tyres onto in the wet conditions. The curbing in general also very ice-like in these conditions. It looked as though Birchall and, uh, but the Birchalls were under a lot of pressure from Ellis and Clement as they came out of Remus. I'm curious to see whether they're close enough for a move. There's the Charlwood machine in sixth place. Number 29 still there in P6. They've had two podiums so far this year. Stephen Kershaw, Ryan Charlwood. Uh, how are the Ellis and Clement duo matching up to the Birchalls? Because it looked as though Ellis and Clement had a little bit of pace coming out of Remus. They have not switched positions. I thought we might see them in a different order, but that's not quite the case. Lap seven will go on to this time. Four laps left to go. The gap was down last time by in the top two. Payne and Rousseau just 1.7 seconds clear of Tim Reeves. Now let's see if that has shrunk or grown this time. The answer is that it has shrunk again, but only by a few hundredths of a second. So still 1.7 between them. It was 1.76. It's now 1.73. So Reeves and Wilkes are going to have to dig deep into the bag of tricks, I think. They are to challenge Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau for this win. I think Pavarinter and De Haas, as long as everything stays good underneath them, they are in a very strong position 
to claim that podium. I think Ben and Tom Birchall rather preoccupied with fighting for fourth place rather than trying to hunt down third. And I'm not sure they have quite the same pace underneath them as well. The top three are all in the uh, mid-158s. Birchall's best time, a 159.195. Italy, though that is not helped by the ever-present Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. Are very much making their intentions clear there in fifth position. It's remarkably sedate looking at some parts of this circuit, but I can assure you these riders are pushing as hard as possible. These drivers and passengers are pushing as hard as possible in the prevailing conditions. It's one thing to stay just under the limit. It's quite another to stray just over. That's when you start to lose a lot more than you gain. Oh, Reeves and Wilkes there with a slight bobble going into the final turn. Tim Reeves... Just tried to get that turned in. At the first part of the lap, it looks like Reeves and Wilkes are a lot quicker. And sure enough, even with that error, I'd say they lost a good half second there just in the final corner. But still, the gap is down to 1.4. So if they can just string together clean laps without that last corner error, they could be right there on the back of Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau before the end. Mark Wilkes certainly willing him on. And you can see how much more speed he carries through the chicane, I think. The chicane is where he's making up a good two or three tenths there, Tim Reeves. On lap eight of ten here in the FIM Superside, the Supercar uh, Sidecar World Championship. Looks to me as though Ellis and Clement have maybe just fallen off the back of our championship leaders, the Birchals. Looks as though it didn't quite pull out of the corner in quite the same way at Remus. Hopefully there's not an underlying issue with the Ellis and Clement machine. They are fairly comfortable there in fifth place. They shouldn't lose any more positions as long as things stay as they are. However, again, what a missed opportunity this is, unfortunately, for Ellis and Clement having started on pole position to be in fifth place now and behind the Birchalls who started in seventh. There is something of an open net feel to that, unfortunately. They have the opportunity, of course, to do it all again on Sunday. I think they might look back on this one with an amount of ruin. However, they could still get past the Birchalls. They've got two laps to try and do it. Payne and Russo have retaliated against Reeves and Wilkes then. The gap has extended back out to 1.7 seconds. So Harry Payne and Kevin Russo may be just retaliating. Steinhausen Racing Pit, I'm sure, will be on tenterhooks. This would be one of the better results of the season so far for Tim Reeves as well. There was a second place finish. In fact, now I'm reading the wrong column. It would be by far the best finish for Reeves and Wilts so far this season. It would move them up the standings a little bit as well uh, if they can take second. Have they even stood on the podium at any point this year? They have done once, yes, at Spa. But it has been a fairly anonymous season so far for Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes, and this second place would certainly go a long way to... Uh, just reminding everybody that Reeves is an eight-time world champion for many, many reasons. And in these conditions, where the seen-it-all, done-it-all approach is, is very much favourable, Tim Reeves is showing his class. And at one time, it looked as though 
It was a legitimate challenge for victory on from Reeves and Wilkes. It does look to have dissipated now. They come on to the final lap of the race. The gap was 1.7 seconds. Just the eyeball test, I'd say that's closer to two now, but I could be mistaken. Let's see what they are across the line this time. It is 2.086, so yes, another three tenths or so taken out of Payne and Rousseau, or rather taken out of Reeves and Wilkes by Payne and Rousseau. So the leaders continue to extend their lead. It's also just over two seconds now between fourth and fifth place. So Ben and Tom Birchall seemingly in control of that fourth place scrap now. You see the Manx symbols on their helmets on the 45. That Munza logo above the uh, gantry there almost looks like a Manx logo itself, doesn't it? But the uh, 45, Payne and Rousseau currently heading towards a very well-deserved victory, have controlled the race from lights out. Uh, yet to take a victory this season, of course. Started off the year very, very strong indeed with a second place finish at the Saxon Ring, but have, I think, failed to make the top five ever since then. So this is a real shift in the form and a real turn to the right direction for Payne and Rousseau, who have just a couple of corners between themselves and victory. Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau head towards Rint Curve for the final time. The chequered flag will await the Steinhausen Racing duo. And for the first time this season, Rolf Steinhausen, the three-time TT winner and two-time world champion himself, will see his machine, the number 45, cross the line. Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau have done it. A wonderful result, a brilliant race win for Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau. Tim Reeves takes a second position. That will help him fighting in the lower half of the top 10 in the championship. Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes will be happy with that. Third place to the Christie's. Rather, sorry, I should say, to Pavarinta and De Haas. My apologies, Pavarinta and De Haas on the second of the Bonovo action machines, rounding out the podium places. That's a big result for them as well. The Birchels outscore Ellis and Clement. Even though they started seventh, they finished fourth ahead of Ellis and Clement, who were going to be or were pole sitters in this race. They did not capitalize on that pole position. And the Birchall brothers will extend their championship lead, which is not something that was on my bingo card for this weekend in this first race. A surprising race all round. But for Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau, who got the best start off the line, it was all academic from there. A very well-managed race from Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau to take the win at Red Bull Ring. Spaß pur und ab sofort. Vier Jahre Garantie auf alle neuen Kawasaki Straßenmotorräder in Deutschland. Auf zum Kawasaki Vertragspartner. Dort findet ihr das richtige Motorrad. Garantiert. Driven by Passion. Driven by Perfection. 
driven by racing. Gila's driven by function. Red Bull ring has certainly been a harsh mistress so far this weekend, but Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau have taken the win in the first race of the weekend, the sprint race in the superside category. Reeves and Wilkes taking second place there ahead of Pavarinta and De Haas rounding out the podium. A great result for them. The Birchalls recover to fourth place after a poor qualifying. Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement, fifth place, that have hoped for at least a podium from today. Kershaw and Charlwood in sixth. The Christie's fell down the order a little bit as well. Still third in the championship, I believe. They'll, they'll be down in seventh place. Uh, just to rattle through the rest of the top ten, the Peugeots in the 74 and eighth. Stroyer and Kolsch, the 21 in ninth. Holden and Midigal in tenth. Archer and Christie, eleventh in the 70. The Zimmerman and Mal combination on the 33 in twelfth. Kinsweger and Sedlicek, thirteenth. Schwegler and Kapeski in 14th position. Uh, Cable and Richardson 15th on the L&W racing machine. Gertlich and Neubert down in 16th position on the 42. Leugen and Darris in 17th. The last of the finishes we lost the number nine of Vinay and Pira uh, at some point during the race after just three laps of running. Uh, but nonetheless, it will be celebrations abound, I think, for Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau. A very well-deserved first victory of the season. The coin flip has not always gone in their favour. In fact, I'd argue a majority of the time it's not gone in their favour in the slightest. Did not compete in either race at Most. So will have lost championship points as a result of that. But a really good bounce back. A really good statement victory here at the Red Bull Ring. One of the most famous and most modern circuits on the calendar this year. And a huge win for Payne and Rousseau. And another strike in favour of the Birchalls over Ellis and Clement. I believe it will be a 30-point gap now in the championship in favour of Ben and Tom Birchall over Ted, uh, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. I thought that gap was going to shrink today. But that has proven not to be the case. And the Birchalls will never have celebrated a fourth place quite as much as I'm sure they will be this evening. The Mansfield-based brothers who have already taken four wins this year. Incidentally, that was their first time off the podium. And yet that fourth place probably does more for their championship than either of the second places they registered at Spa and Most. Even when they're not at the front of the order, it seems that we cannot separate Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement, Ben and Tom Birchall. They are the championship protagonists. And they continue to scrap together around this gorgeous Red Bull ring circuit. The backdrop of this circuit is absolutely sensational. I'm glad to be making a couple of visits to this track this season. It is otherworldly. How beautiful it is in the surrounding areas of this track in Austria. The topography around the circuit is very impressive. And because there are so many mountains and hillsides uh, in the vicinity of the track, you, you almost get duped into thinking the track itself is on rather flat ground. But, oh, no, 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 that is not the case. That slight rise up to turn three, that is not slight in the slightest. Uh, very, very hilly up there towards Remus. It is a dipping and diving layout. Of course, much different from the original Oschitzring circuit uh, that originally held this ground. Truncated and uh, slightly slower, this version of the track, but no less spectacular. Of course, our next visit in two weeks will be Assen as well. And that is going to be another track which will surely suit these sidecars. We do, however, of course, have the big race to come on Sunday. The Sunday race, slightly longer at length as well. More time for the riders to maybe settle into the conditions if we're seeing more rain tomorrow. 
I'm not even going to mention the forecast for Sunday because as a British motorsport commentator, if I mention the weather, it will do the opposite. So I'm just going to stay stum on that. Uh, Google the forecast for yourself. Uh, the track marshals, I think, being vacated from their post. So thank you as always to the marshals for their efforts to keep our competitors safe to ensure that we can run these events to the highest safety conditions. That is very much the IDM mantra as well to ensure that uh, everything is run as smoothly and safely as possible. Hence the delay to this race to make sure that we have the best possible conditions uh, in spite of the weather. I understand we are going to see the podium ceremony in just a few moments time. There you see some of the riders leave. That is the other, yep, that's the other Hannafin machine, Archer and uh, Adam Christie. Of course, uh, a big experience golf between them, or between all three uh, Christies and Rupert Archer. Rupert Archer, a mainstay in the sidecar world. I wonder if they're checking in on the stream. Hello, if so. <laughs> the Great to see all of the teams down there. Looks like we've got Cable and Richardson hey guys, down I'm there as well. Uh, the teams the that have and I'm waiting. Yes, no stake yes. in the podium. But the guys are just are, like uh, coming in closely and they are slowly. The guys that have no stake in the podium do yes. come along and support the others, which is really lovely to see. There's the Peugeot family team as well. Ted and Vincent Peugeot, of course. They take eighth place in this race. They will also be up on the podium in the IDM sidecar category. That's worth mentioning. Uh, the Peugeots have won the German championship element ahead of uh, Archer and Christie, Zimmerman and Mal, who will be at the podium on that front. But uh, Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau will take to the top step in terms of the FIM Sidecar World Championship order. The first time this season. And Rolf Steinhausen's team. Steinhausen name one that is very much tied to success at the highest levels of sidecar competition, of course. And I think Harry Payne and Kevin Russo both very much aware of their sidecar racing history. They will be elated to have taken a win Der ist stark on a Steinhausen machine. Das ist gar kein Problem, nur ich warte hier gerade noch auf die Jungs, die sich ein bisschen Zeit lassen. Hoffe, dass ich jetzt den einen oder anderen gleich hier an die Strippe The bekomme. podium presentation <laughs> is about to get underway. You see the Birchels there bantering with the camera. Got their own umbrella holders. Such is the life of uh, what is it now? 14 time TT winners? Has been an incredible season thus far for the Birchels, and they will extend their championship lead, as I mentioned. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Ah, we can now go down to the presentation. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you from the commentary box. And I'm just waiting here for Pekka and Ilse for the first interview. And for sure, my cameraman, I need him too here right now. So, guys, it was a really tough race, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, well, it was really nice. It was quite wet, but it wasn't as bad as this morning. And, um, yeah, I think we had quite a good start. And then we managed to get past Ellis and Emmanuel. So, yeah. Pekka, give us some thoughts about the race here in the rain conditions. Yeah, of course, this rain is difficult. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm not I'm no like it driving out and needed to bear points and to do a time race stop and this is good day and it is a working very good me and this nice race thank you thank you guys we see you in the podium and congrats for this yeah brilliant third place and we are coming up to these guys we already know them a lot of time seen in this camera tim how, how, how was it guys yeah it was good it was really good it was, the track was fun and uh, i like the rain but Unfortunately, we had a few issues in qualifying, so we didn't get a very good grid shot. But a good shot. But coming from eighth, it we made it lively and fun. And uh, yeah, good job by Harry and Kevin. They did a good job. We got real close to them on one lap, and then I made a stupid mistake and lost all the gap that I made. 
So yeah, we'll have to try again tomorrow, but I enjoyed it. Mark, give us some thoughts about it. Yeah, no, like Tim said, we uh, we got real close to Harry uh, one lap and we got a great start. Tim made it through the field really well. And uh, and yeah, I really thought, <laughs> I looked up, we had uh, five laps left when we were behind Harry and I thought, come on, we can do this, we can do this. And, and yeah, we just yeah made a couple of little mistakes, which, you know, in the rain, it's easily done. And But no, he rode really well and, and yeah, we were really happy with that result. Yeah, I'm still young and I'm still learning, so... You're absolutely young and you're pushing always as hard as you can. That's what we thought. Thank you guys and congrats for the second place. And now I would like to see the winner here. The first guys coming up here. Congrats guys. Harris and Kevin. Brilliant race guys. Congrats for this first place. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, great race. Uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, like uh, Tim was saying, it was sliding around a little bit, but uh, it was just a little bit just to control it and try and stay focused and not mess up. And yeah, managed to manage to keep him behind just and yeah, happy. Kevin, how were the weather conditions outside actually? Because you yeah, know, it was like critical. If you start or if you don't. Yeah, the, the rain was here, and then, uh, like uh, Tim said, we just uh, yeah, keep the gap. But uh, well, I think 50% of the race, we saw him, and he closed the gap. And then uh, after, yeah, it was okay because we still uh, keep the victory. You managed it very well. Congrats for this 25 points, and uh, yeah, see you tomorrow in the second race. But first of all, we are continuing with the podium. Our next step is As towards usual, some highlights. With our from third place oh, are we going to go to the podium? I think we might go to the podium. First race on the Saturday in the rain conditions goes to the number 44. To the double sided in Finland and uh, Netherlands combination of Pekka, Peverinta, and Ilse de Haas. Great effort from Pavarinta and De Haas then to take Congrats the third step of the podium. Congrats and brilliantly done, guys, in these really tricky conditions. Congrats once again. And the second place here for the number 77 goes to Great Britain in form of Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkins. Amelia, the podium for Tim Reeves. And these guys were unstoppable today, the number 45. From Steinhausen Racing goes to Harrison Payne and Kevin Rousseau. Delight, I'm sure, again for Payne and Rousseau as they take to the top step. To honor our third place, number 44, we have our FM and our jury member, Martin Suchi from Austria, which will hand out now this third place to pick up every intern, Ilse de Haas. This second place here for Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkins. Congrats, guys. And the first and the biggest trophy here goes to the number 45, Harrison Payne and Kevin Rizzo from Star Wars and Racing. Congrats, guys. Brilliantly done. And of course now, we're here to honor of the winners, the national anthem. There you go, there's the national anthem then.
Campbell, Payne and Rousseau. And we will now see the champagne sprayed as we go to highlights from the first race of the weekend in FIM Sidecar. longer race two is to come on on sunday afternoon it will be 2 p.m central european time 1 p.m uk time convert to your local time zone where necessary you won't want to miss race two what will the conditions bring will it be a completely different picture that we paint on sunday at the red bull ring i can't wait to find out congratulations again to harry payne and kevin rousseau our winners in the superside sprint race